Hey everyone, I am doing a screencast today for um, one of my app a days uh, challenge to myself here. Uh, the one that we're going to be working on today is a to do app, uh, simple to do uh, using Angular because we already have Angular running on uh, the site here. So uh, I had already set up uh, the routes and resources to um, namespace apps here and have this list lead to um, apps to do. So if you have any questions or want to see an example of namespacing, um, feel free to check out the code on GitHub. But I'd really like to just kind of dive right into making the to-do app uh, in Angular. So let's do that. Um, so here's our index for this page, um, our HTML file. Um, we've already, like I said, set up our controller and our routes, so we can go ahead and close those out. Um, and let's close out this as well. We don't need that either. So right now we're only going to work with these three files. Uh, this apps.js is where all of uh, my controllers are built off of, so I can have varying controllers off of my um, main app, my main Angular module. So I've already added to-do controller, which is going to be the name of our controller that we're building for this specific application. Um, so let's go into our to-do.js file, which is living in this directory within the JavaScript folder, and we will go ahead and build that. So what we're going to want to do is build another Angular module with this same name, so to-do controller, and that's going to be key. So we'll do um, a variable here, and we'll call it to-do, and we're going to set up an Angular module. I can't type this morning, Angular module, and that's going to take the name um, which will correspond to that controller. Uh, so to paste that in and give it an array there. So now we have this um, variable to do, which we can build a controller off of. So let's try and do that, and then we'll um, hop into our um, page here, our HTML, and make sure that in console we don't have any errors. So we'll build out the controller, and we're going to call it to do controller. And that will take, um, we already know that we're going to use scope. Um, so let's actually add all that now. We can, let's say you're um, just building something kind of quick and dirty in development. You can add scope to your project uh, like such. So you can just pass it in there and go about your business and um, write your code. However, if you try to push that code up to production, um, you will wind up with some nasty errors because minification will um, will minify that scope variable um, if you don't explicitly tell Angular, hey, I'm going to be using scope and give it a string, which won't be minified, and then pass it the function here um, in this array. So that's what we're going to do because this is going to be production code at some point here. And there we go. So for right now, uh, that's all we're going to do with the controller. So we will jump into um, our website here, open up our console, and make sure that there's no nasty errors. That error uh, was presumably from before. So let's refresh the page. And cool. Very good. We like a nice, clean console down there. No errors. Awesome. So what's the next step? I, th I think that now would be a good time to set up in here, um, our div with our controller, and actually double check that this is why we don't have any errors. That would probably be why. So if we are going to get an error, it would be after we add our to-do controller. OK, so within this div is where we're going to be writing all of our code for um, adding and deleting and updating our to-do list. So let's refresh the page again, make sure there's no errors, and cool. That's good news. So I would say the next thing that we want to do is, well, we can close this because we already know now that um, this controller is living happily on our page, so we don't need to have that open. Let's set um, a scope variable here. So we're going to say to do's. Um, we're going to make it plural because that's going to be equal to an array. And that array is going to contain these objects, which will ultimately be each of our individual to-do items. So we'll have a title, 
and um, we're just going to hard code this for right now. So this will be like a, a test to do item. And it will also have a, um, an indicator where we'll use a Boolean to say whether or not the to do is done. So we'll say done and set it to false. Um, so for right now, it's just going to be array with a single object to kind of test our assumptions about whether or not this is all working. So let's in our index file then, we will create a, um, a section, uh, a, an organized or an unorganized list, I should say, where we can see, oops, each of these uh, to-do items, or this one to-do item. So in these LIs, uh, we want to tell Angular that this is something that we're going to have a number of. So we're going to use ng repeat, and we're going to set one to do or one item you could name this whatever you could call it an item let's do that that's a little bit more explicit explicit so item in to do's it's perfect and then here we'll say we want to see each item's title um, and so what angular is doing on the back end here is saying for that Thing that we attach to scope, which is an array, I want to see each of those things and call them items. So this item object now has the ability to call title because title lives in, in here and will return the value of this, which is to do test to do item. So uh, let's uh, restart our browser here and see if that's the case. And cool, there we go. We have our test to do item. So that's all well and good, but we need a way to ultimately update and add things to the to this so let's throw a form in here and in this form we'll have an input field um, which is obviously where we'll add our uh, our items and we'll need a submit button as well so we'll put a button in here um, great so our form is going to um, control our information going into our to-do, so we'll call this form. I guess that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty explicit. And then ultimately we will want to call some type of uh, function which is going to add this. So we will say that on submission of this form, so we'll use ng submit, we'll have this method that we or this function that we haven't written yet, but we'll call it uh, add item. And so when we submit the form, ultimately that add item will be called. So for our form input, we're gonna have a type of text. And then we're also going to want to uh, name this something, which we can then refer to in the backend on our to-do.js file. So we'll call this um, new item. And then we'll also tell ng-model what that is, and it's also going to be new item. And with this input field, we're gonna make it required because ultimately we don't want to add a bunch of blank spots. So if somebody's just like pounding the to do the submit button here, um, we want to make sure that we're not just throwing, uh, throwing a bunch of empty strings into our array. So in here, we will also um, say to Angular, hey, like if this is, uh, if the required field is uh, not filled, we want to be able to not submit it. So we'll say form is uh, invalid. So we'll disable it if uh, it's invalid. Um, the only other thing I think I'm gonna add is, well, let's take a look at what this looks like right now. So we have this, I have uh, bootstrap, so I'll just throw a class on here for making the button look a little bit prettier. Uh, button. Okay. Cool, cool. So what now? Now that we have this form, we can say like, we get this little message because it's invalid, which is fun. Um, we want to be able to add things. So if we put in some text, it should 
update our list dynamically, right? Cool. That's what we'll do next then. So let's go over to our to-do um, JS file and we're going to want to build this function called add item so that when we hit submit, it's actually doing what it's supposed to do, which is add the item. So off of our scope, we're going to want to build that function. So we'll do dollar scope and we're going to call add item. Uh, add item. And that's going to be equal to a function. And we'll throw those on there. And so what that function is going to do for us is essentially just take that information from the form field, set that to a title, uh, set done to false, and then push that onto our array. So we'll just copy this and go like such. So we already have to do's defined. So we can say um, scope, right? Scope to do's and then we'll say we're going to push onto that this new object and that object is going to have a title which is equal to the scope um, new item because that's what we set here and our ng model is new item so we will attach new item to title and we will set done to false. I'll throw a semicolon on here to clean it up. Uh, the only other thing is we want to consider when you're adding something, so like wash dishes, like everybody's favorite thing. Uh, when you submit that item, great, but you don't want to, oh, I hit it two more times. We want to actually clear this field out so that you're not just adding a bunch of wash dishes because nobody wants to wash the dishes more times than they have to. So let's make sure that after we uh, after we hit the submit button and this function is called at the very end of the function, we actually end up resetting new item to be a blank string so that we don't add it clears the field essentially. So we're only washing the dishes one time. Oops, got to refresh. Cool, very good. Um, so I really want to try and keep these videos as short as possible. So I think that right there is like a really good starting section for how to make Angular interact with your front end. Um, and connecting things like ng model, a button, and a form field. Um, ng repeat is probably one of the more common things that you'll see, a more common directive that you'll see. Uh, so I'm going to finish this up by adding delete item, uh, a delete button and a strike through and kind of adding a little bit of styling to this. Um, the code will be up on GitHub, so if you want to check that out, go ahead and check that out, but I don't want to make these overly long videos. I think that this is enough to get you started. So um, I hope this was helpful. Leave some comments below if you have any questions. Um, and thanks again for watching. Check out the code on GitHub.